Okay. I want to welcome everybody to our Thursday, April 15th community chat. Today we have our special guest, Amherst Recreation Director, Barb Bills joining us. Welcome, Barb, and thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, before we launch into questions for Barb and hear a little bit about um, her work in the recreation department, I'm going to allow your town manager to give a couple quick updates. Thanks, Brianna. So, well, since we, we're here with recreation, I want to lead with the congratulations to the UMass hockey team for the, being the NCAA men's uh, <laughs> hockey champions. Um, now, there can't be a parade because that's not permitted under um, under the uh, governor's guidelines at this point. There, they did when they re arrived back on campus. There was a, a jubilant reception for them. Um, and I think the university is looking at some major celebration in September. And along those lines, it looks like all three of our institutions are looking to reopen um, as close to normal as possible come September. And um, so I think that's really good news for us. It, it uh, speaks to the level of vaccination that's happening throughout the country and in our area. And also that um, you know our team at the Bangs Community Center has continued to run vaccine clinics. I think we've done over 3,000 vaccines so far. We do about um, you know as many we do as many as we get the uh, vaccine vaccine for it, and we don't get enough um, supply. And the university also runs a clinic. So if you're looking for a clinic, they open their clinics at four o'clock on Fridays. So that's my quick update for today. Great. Thank you, Paul. I'm just going to take a quick moment to uh, remind our live attendees who are in Zoom and also those on Facebook Live, uh, please feel free to ask your questions in Zoom. You can put it into the Q&A or raise your hand. We'd love to hear from you live. Um, and then for those watching on Facebook Live, just put a comment into the stream and we will ask your question um, as well. So without further ado, uh, Barb, would you mind introducing yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Barb Bills, and I'm the director of the Amherst Recreation Department. I've been in that position for a little over four and a half years now. And um, I, before that, served as a program director when I first started and then um, moved up to the assistant director for the department. But certainly, uh, it's, uh, it's been a very rewarding. I've worked for the town now for 21 years. So it's been a, an extremely rewarding uh, experience and especially these last uh, four and a half years or so as director. So we, I'm really proud of, of where we've we've come. And, you know, I will be, I, I will be retiring uh, shortly in May as well, actually June, but my last day will be May 12th. So um, I'm looking forward to that, a new chapter in my life, but also uh, very proud of what we've been able to accomplish in the last four and a half years. And we can talk more about that as we go on. That, that recreation direct department that just rolled off your tongue like you've been saying that all along but that's brand new right it is yes well that's part of our strategic plan i'm sure that a lot of you are aware that the department went through a pretty extensive uh, process and uh was facilitated uh by the donahue institute out of umass uh where we went to did a very thorough strategic plan and now we have a a good three-year um if you will map for the future uh, and one of the things, though, that did come out of that strategic plan is that we should change our name. And, and we got a lot of community input um, in all of the aspects that we um, delved, delved into and, and investigated. But the name change really rose to the top. So we took care of that right away. And we became Amherst Recreation uh, officially a few months ago where it was approved by, town, by, the, by the town manager and town council was made aware of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you're not still saying LSSE like me? And, nope. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to get over that though, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've been reminding everybody anytime they, they drop the LSSE by accident, I've been putting in a plug for recreation, even if I'm guilty of it. It's interesting. Um, I've had some meetings with the schools and everyone, and it just rolls off their tongue as well. You know, it's not, they just completely have not used LSSE mm -hmm. anymore, which is, I find fascinating. So uh, it's a good thing. That's a testament to how much sense it makes to have that be the name if, if it yeah. if it was easy to transition. Um, so again, I want to remind our attendees, feel free to raise your hand or pop your question in here in the Q&A function. I do see a number of Amherst Rec staff in here, so feel free to raise your hand so we can bring you in and um, maybe you can say something about your time working with Barb or some of your programming. Um, I know we've we've been 
last last summer was a little bit different than this summer. So can you talk about how, um, you know, spring and summer programming will look this year and uh, maybe starting with youth sports and day camps? Sure. Um, well, I think we're fortunate this year to be, you know, fair, fairly close to where we have been in past years. You know, last year we, we had to make a number of accommodations, but this year uh, we'll be bringing back our day camps, our summer youth sports programs. Um, we'll have activities for kids, uh, you know, at the golf course. Uh, certainly the outdoor pools will be up and running, but there'll be COVID restrictions in place. Uh, the numbers that we'll be allowed to have in the day camps, for instance, will be less than we normally would be operating at, so about 50% less. Um, and, and the outdoor pools, we're still not to the point where we can offer swim lessons, but possibly later in the summer, depending on, you know, how, how the state and how things, you know, their, their regulations and what they put into place, and then how things are looking. So we're hopeful. Um, the spray park should be up and running in June, which is exciting. I know everybody uh, is looking forward to, to uh, getting out there and enjoying Groff Park and the new playground in the spray park, which is just terrific. And uh, we'll be doing adult and youth education programs. Again, most of those will occur outside, outdoors, in um, different areas throughout town. But things like yoga, um, Qigong, uh, let's see, we have the, um, the Sandlot baseball program, and those kinds of programs. So we'll, we'll having that. We're also going to introduce this year, we're going to have an arts program. Uh, for kids that yeah, it's an arts and science program. So that'll be happening as well. And again, those will be limited numbers because of our COVID restrictions, but uh, our staff has done a you know, tremendous job, I think, of adapting and uh, creating safe environments for children uh, and, and our other participants, our adult participants in the programs that we have run. So we've got good experience behind us. And um, so we're moving forward and looking uh, and looking forward to, to offering all kinds of activities for the community. Are you seeing a bigger appetite for participants now, you know, coming into to, to the spring and the, the vaccine being rolled out? Do you feel that people are banging down your doors for, for activities or how is that looking? Well, what we found, I think, is that the uh, day camps particularly, we've opened those up for registration and those are filling up quickly. So there's clearly a need out there, whether it's childcare or kids just wanting to experience some socialization as well as fun recreation activities. So it's, yeah, I would say the demand is, is going to be higher than normal this year. And I think people understand that the numbers are limited. Again, we're going to be operating some of these programs at 50% of what we normally would have run them at. So there's one thing that I do on the on the regular is monitoring what people are searching for on our websites and it's you know seasonally it's always programs that have to do with Amherst recreation so this time of year, even now. Once we have that first warm day people are searching for pools and and cherry hill so um, what will the the pool schedule be the same as it has been in years past or will it be different or are you guys still deciding on that. Yeah, we know we have a we have a pool schedule set we're going to open up. Mill River Pool earlier than normal. We're going to open that up on June 19th. Again, we won't have the swim lessons, but we'll have a very similar schedule to what we did last year. So we'll have lap swimming from, let's say, 10 to 1, and then open swim from 1 to 7.30 p.m. We're going to go a little bit later into the evening. Now, you know, we understand that parents like, you know, they'll come home from work. They want to take the kids out for a swim, maybe before or after dinner. And uh, so we like to make that available to them as uh, this year, which we weren't able to do last year. So a little bit longer in the day uh, and starting a little bit earlier. Um, War Memorial will open up on June 26th. And then the pools will stay open through both, uh, well, Mill River will stay open through uh, Labor Day. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, it's great. I think uh, we, we have that. And of course, we have the waiter at, at Mill River as well. And that will open on June 9th also. And those combined with the with the splash pad, there'll be options for people to to stay cool this summer. Right. You bet. And what about Cherry Hill? That's one of the other the biggest inquiries we get is, you know, is it open? Can I, how do I book it on my tea time? And you guys have that 
system all set up where it's really easy online. So mm -hmm. have you been having a big attendance at the at, at Cherry Hill as well? Well, yeah, especially whoa, with the weather being so warm initially when we opened, we, we've we been uh, very busy, which is great. Um, we are, you know, we haven't raised our prices. So the prices are the same. Do you have to make a tea time as Rihanna uh, mentioned? So that's easily done through our, our website. And um, we will be offering a women's clinic, a youth camp, this year. So lots of good activities going on. We have a, a women's league. Uh, it's a kind of a low key fun league for women. And we also have a men's league. So there is plenty for it, you know, for everyone at all kinds of different levels. You know, we've always said it's sort of the course for everyone. And uh, so we've, we've sort of lived up to that mantra, which is good. And you had, you had members help clean it up this year as a new, new sort of we initiative. Did. Yeah, that's that's correct. We we had 25 volunteers and uh, some members, some not members, just people who come and play. And uh, boy, they're just really fantastic uh, folks from our community who came out and you know raked and picked up debris and um, you know just helped trim things up. So it was great. And they spent almost a good half a day up there and got a lot of projects done. So we were really happy to have them. Nice. The true community golf course. That's right. So will people find you there in June? <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> so we have some questions and comments in the room. Um, there was great skiing there this winter regarding Cherry Hill. And a question, I believe this is probably about the pool facilities. Uh, will the changing facilities be available? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Again, we're still waiting for guidance from the state on and they have that it hasn't come out yet. So we'll have more information and we'll be able to post that, I would hope, within a month or so. And that website is, at, sorry. Oh, go ahead. At the, yeah, at our and you can always check our webs, Amherst M A Rec.org. And so last year the, the changing rooms were not available. You could walk through them to get to the pool, but you had to have already changed your clothes in advance. Um, because yes, of COVID concerns. That's correct. You could use the restrooms, um, but people would arrive in their swimsuits and would leave in their swimsuits. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned on that. Yeah. So I'm wondering who that is in your background yeah. over there. Bar We've heard you have an office mate that's pretty famous. Bar Barb thinks oh. she's the star, but she's not. <laughs> what I is that? It. Is that a big oh, stole? Oh, yes, yeah, so that's my big stole. <laughs> that's uh, that's Lana, the little diva. Yeah, she's uh, she, she likes to. I guess she's a camera hog. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should don't don't let us keep looking at her. Move the camera so <laughs> she's she steals steals the show for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we go. I didn't even realize she was there. That's fun. <laughs> oh, we've Queen got a Lana. <laughs> Queen Lana, yeah, definitely. Nicole says, yay, Queen Lana. <laughs> she must be famous then. Um, and then we have another question here. When may, when is the new playground opening? Hmm. Um, you know, I don't have the specific date. Paul, do you have any update on that? Yeah, so I think the goal is that for them to be complete with the construction around June 1st. There's a few weeks where they have to let... Um, you know, a little bit of grass to grow and, and there's some settling or something that has to happen. But really in, I'm, I'm guessing July or sooner if we can get it done. So it's moving around long really quickly and the crews were here as soon as the weather broke. Um, and, you know, of course with any project there are always sort of things that pop up and they're fixing them quickly, but it's been a pretty smooth project um, from our perspective. It's gonna be a really great addition to the downtown. It's on Kendrick Park for those of you who don't know. Um, it will be a real anchor for that end of the community of the of the downtown area. And we'll be sharing a, a little photo update about the the pro progress a little later today, so you can see. Um, oh, neat! Some uh, of the, great. and I didn't know we were having these, but the I, I guess you call them bol they're boulders for climbing and and playing. And so uh, we'll be sharing a little update later today on our social media channels about Kendrick. That Park. that yeah, that actually came out of some of the group meetings that we had. People were asking for. Um, things that kids could do that were sort of more natural. It wasn't just pl plastic or metal climbing structures. They, aren't there other things that you can just climb on? And that was yeah. incorporated into the design. It, it makes a big difference. A lot of the this playgrounds in Sweden are like that with natural materials and it's really nice. So excited mm. to see that. 
So one thing we didn't talk about, um, which is uh, an event that's near and dear to my heart, are the annual fireworks and 4th of July celebration. Um, also something that's already getting searched for right now in April. Mm-hmm. So any, any update on where we are with that or? Yeah, Paul, you can jump in. Unfortunately, this, uh, this year, we're going to have to cancel again. Um, we've been in discussions with the university and both entities have decided it, it you know, for, from a safety perspective, this, this would be the prudent thing to do. So we won't be having the 4th of July fireworks this year, unfortunately, but I'm sure next year will be bigger and better than ever. Yeah, 2022. Think, yeah, mm-hmm. and most communities are not holding holding their fireworks this year. Some are, some are delaying them. Some are putting them back to the year. But it's there's so many uncertainties, and you have to contract with things. And for us, we actually do a, or the recreation department does a lot of fundraising to help pay for the event. So if you don't get that started early, you're not going to have enough money to put it on. So that was the wisest decision was to to declare that we weren't going to have fireworks in 2021. Well, there's always next year. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, one but thing. We, oh, go ahead. Yeah, but but we did do Winterfest this year, a, a sort of a modified version, which was kind of creative and exciting to see. Yeah, we were thanks to um, you know the bid and the chamber. We did a collaboration with them and and were able to do the uh, the drive through experience um, where we had all the ice sculptures. We had over I think a, a, at least a dozen ice sculptures on the common, and we counted unofficially about 2,000 cars that came through, which was pretty remarkable. And I think uh, people just loved it. So just a, a, a great event and um, just really happy to, have, to, to be able to do something. Was Winterfest, did that come up under your reign, Barbara? Is that is, is his attempt? I'm not that, I'm so yeah, relatively no. new here, so. Yeah, we started that, I believe it was about 2008. And again, uh, it was a collaboration initially with the chamber. Uh, the two to both us and the, and the chamber. And, uh, you know, we were just looking for something that would bring people outdoors initially. And, uh, you know, just basically a celebration of, of winter. And uh, it, it just grew, it grew from a one day event to a week long event with uh, multiple, you know, community um, uh, activities. A lot of uh, different businesses would put things, you know, we had, and, and then we had nonprofits and, you know, we had the Amherst Cinema Center, we showed movies, the library got involved. So it became really a big, a much bigger event. And uh, it was, you know, so hopefully we'll get back to that at some point as well. And what was your favorite ice sculpture? We're, we were team unicorn in this house. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that unicorn was pretty special. I think I'll have to go with you on that one. I was on the octopus. We can't all be right all the time, Paul. <laughs> well, one, one thing that, that I think is pretty notable, and forgive me, I don't know exactly what year it was, but a couple of years ago, you and your team won an award for your outreach initiatives. And I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about what that was and what some of that outreach looks like um, for you yeah, and your team. I, you know, I see Nikki's here probably speak to that as well I'll just do a quickie but you know if she wants to to chime in we can have her um, do that but we yeah we started different outreach programs at the um, the various housing areas if you will apartment uh, complexes in town just trying to reach out to some of the underserved uh, kids in our community that you know through who had barriers to participating in our programs to basically give them sort of a taste of of some programming and then hopefully bridge them into you know other programs that we provide like our camps like our sports programs so it it has and it's continuing she's doing a you know really good job this spring she'll be doing some outreach programs um again in person so uh, that's that's moving along really well I don't know, Nikki, if you want to activate her, but. Yep, yep, she's raising her hand. Good. Here you go, Nikki. So the award was basically in recognition of that program, and that was through the Massachusetts Park and Recreation Association. So yeah, we were, we were thrilled to receive that. Welcome, Nikki. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, yes. Um, my name is Nicola Belli. I'm the Camp Outreach and Special Events Coordinator for uh, Amherst Recreation. And as Barb was saying, we have been uh, 
conducting outreach for a few years now, and it is a bit different uh, than it was pre-COVID, but I think that we are producing, you know, anytime there is an event, it's, uh, you know, condensed into bags of 100, and these kids are given, you know, a fun activity, and they're always given a personalized activity book and all the promotion to see where our other programs are, when to sign up. And it's really great to just be out there and see the families and the kids that we do serve in our programming outside of, of you know, a camp setting or uh, a special activity. And, you know, just I'm excited to be like, oh, yay, when are you coming? When are we going to see you again? What did you bring? So this spring, we are going to do spring in a bag. And um, we're just working on that. That'll be launched in May, and we'll be hitting up a few of the housing communities in April. That's awesome. And I, and I also want to say, you know, being a, a customer on the other end, um, always had a great experience and felt so welcome um, with all your camp programming and everything. You do a fabulous job. Awesome. And, and you've recently joined our equity team. Um, here for internal staff trying to promote equity and inclusion in the workplace. So we're really excited that all of the experience that you bring um, and the work that you've done to, to that. So we look forward to having you. Thank you, I'm very excited. All right, do you wanna stick around on the chat or do you want me to hide you? <laughs> I'll give you all the center stage. You don't need okay. to see <laughs> Okay, all right. Thank Thanks for popping. Oh, Paul, do you have questions for Nikki? Yeah, well, no, not for Nikki, but for Barb. You know, it's, it's, thanks for being here, Nikki. Um, so Barb, as you reflect back over your career, um, what's your sort of takeaways and, you know, what are you, things you're proud of and, mm. and how you're looking towards retirement? Wow, that's a, wow, that's, that's a very big question. There are a lot of questions there. Uh, I think my most proud of, I, you know, I, I've, I've thought a little bit about it. Um, I think, you know, recently we provided this remote learning assistance program mm -hmm. and childcare program. And we, we, it was a huge deal for us. And I have to give a lot of credit to Grace Marshak who, who led up that, you know, basically helped direct that program. And Nikki uh, later came in and then offered a second section of that program. Uh, so just kind of re the way we responded to the pandemic, helping out in other departments. Um, certainly we were at Puppers. We've helped at the senior center, some of the staff. We've helped in some of the finance areas of the town um, any, and, and also um, helping with, you know, the coordination, uh, of the health department of the vaccinations and so forth. So a lot of that, just uh, real proud of my staff with they've responded and, and just recently, but certainly, um, you know, that's sort of sort of recent kind of a, things that, that come to mind. But overall, you know, just uh, it's just been an, an incredible, you know, 21 years. This has really been my sort of dream job to come to this. I started as a program director and, and I've worked my way up and, and back to, uh, you know, a position of director. I, before this, before I came here, I, you know, I, I worked for the, the military in, in recreation. I was a recreation director overseas in Japan and Korea. And so then I got away from recreation for a while and went into fundraising and, and some other things and then came back to it um, 21 years ago. So uh, I don't know, I just feel really fortunate also to be able to have served, you know, to live and serve, you know, your community is just, that's what more could you ask for? Yeah. So I guess that's about it, you know, really, I, I'm just really fortunate and grateful. Yeah, so I mean, you've been a joy to work with, you know, um, and uh, I, I agree with you that uh, I have said this many times, but the uh, um, recreation LSSC staff has been uh, just remarkable during the pandemic, and and they have helped with the election, with finances, staffing Puffers Pond, setting up an entire learning center at the middle school, and staffing that, and you know, helping the health department, uh, helping you know, just. The, the list goes on. And the, the thing that was always uh, impressive to me is that no one ever said to me, said, that's not my job description. You know, they were like, what else can we do? Where, where, where do you need us? And it was just every person in your department. I think that starts with your sort of willingness to take on different things. And 
um, helping to guide that. So I just want to thank you for that. But, you know, your whole career with the town. I mean, when I got here, everyone had really high regard for you and the work that you'd done. And so I was really glad that you were able to get become the director of the department and um, just, you know, rock solid department head so and that's <laughs> never had to worry about that <laughs> you know like recreation took care of itself so i really appreciated all your work for the town thank you paul it's been a you know it's also been a pleasure working with you um i i couldn't ask for a, a better boss so thank you. thank you well i want to invite our attendees you know since we're coming down to our last couple of minutes that went quick barb didn't it it did see i, I told you i would try to make it painless <laughs> Um, I'd love to invite anybody in the room to kind of offer any last minute comments or, or uh, questions. I see we have a comment here. Um, Sarah's glad to see that a multi-use path will go all the way to Gruff Park from East Hadley Road. So that's yeah, another that's a really, exciting project. Yeah, so we got a grant to do that. Um, there'll be some major changes there to help people cross um, West, is it South Pleasant Street, West Street there, I think. Um, so, and that will that will work its way through the process. Okay, so last chance, everybody. Questions, comments. Um, so well, tell us about retirement, though. That's why I want to know what you're. What are you going to do? I mean, I know you're 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 an expert skier. <laughs> what? That's what we're Where told. did you ever hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Queen of the bunny slope, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, I think um, I'm just going to start by just enjoying my first summer off, probably since I was in junior high school. So um, I'm just looking forward to, to uh, taking a, a few months off initially and then, you know, go from there. That sounds right. good. And, and Barb, anything that you didn't get asked today that you want to leave people with um, in the last moment or two? And Paul, the same for you? I think we covered pretty much everything in, front of the show of our, in terms of our programming and so forth for this summer. I don't know if any of the other staff members who are here have it, or, or Sarah, if you have anything to add from the commission standpoint, but I think we got it. Is, is Lana prepared for you to be home all the time? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> She's pretty uptight, as you can tell. <laughs> um, Sarah, Sarah says we will miss you. Ditto. Thanks, we will miss you, Barb. And well, I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm still living in Amherst, so hopefully I'll see all of you. Oh, we might have to do some recruitment, get you on a border committee. Exactly. We can't, we can't let you just go off and enjoy yourself too much. That's a possibility. <laughs> um, and I guess I, the one thing that I will add, you know, we're actively recruiting uh, for a recreation mm -hmm. director. So that, that position is um, posted up on our career portal, amherstma.gov slash jobs. If you or someone you know is an amazing recreation type, we'd love to have them apply. As much as, as, much as we don't want Barb to leave, we have to <laughs> face reality. <laughs> All right, so with that, I, I don't see any other hands or comments. Um, I want to thank Barb for taking time out of her day to join us today for her what will probably be her last community chat. I know you've been here a few times, but we'd love to have you back any other time. Great. Well, Barb. thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, Brianna.